Welcome back into the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show. Haley Stasiak and Jordan Ham. The season has wrapped up and now we're looking forward and a little bit back on the last season. We're joined now by Arizona Varsity's Ralph Amston. Ralph, thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. If you could sum up this 2017 season in one sentence, how would you sum it up? Great. I thought it was a great season. I, I thought um, there was a, a lot of uh, a lot of positive storylines, a lot of athletes establishing themselves, um, and uh, and just some very 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 good teams. Um, I I really enjoyed it. You made an interesting point to me this Saturday after Saguaro won their fifth straight title that if they can win five, they can win eight. And I, I just wanted to ask you just about the way that Saguaro has their roster compiled because they had the, the veterans, they had the Max Massingales, the Josiah Bradleys, the, you know, the two receivers on the outside, the, the guys that had been multiple year starters, but they also had a ton of young guys. Uh, so just what do you foresee for this Saguaro team over the years to come? Well, I, I mean, especially defensively, they were incredibly young with, you know, Keely Ringo, Connor Soley, and Seth Robinson and all those guys. I mean, they just didn't really have a lot of seniors. I think maybe their nose tackle was a senior, and that's it. Um, off On the offensive line, uh, not only were they very young, but they had some injuries and had to play some even younger guys. And so now they're going to be a little bit older and a little bit deeper headed into next year. Uh, they're they're pretty much they're replacing um, you know Josiah Bradley and Max Massengale uh, and their two outside receivers um, and and while that would be a Herculean task for most schools uh, they actually have the ability for whoever comes in at quarterback and whoever's going to be playing receiver uh, to go through some growing pains because I believe the defense will really be able to hold it down for them. Do teams that had outstanding seasons this year, like Perry, Notre Dame Prep, Liberty, and the like, in your opinion, do these are these teams that we should continue to watch in the coming years? Well, Notre Dame Prep, it's tough because they were so senior heavy, but I think once you've established that culture, uh, and you have to remember that they, they were actually pretty darn good over a three-year period, not just this year. They were held out of the playoffs um, you know, through something they couldn't really control last year and then two years ago. They were basically the number seventeen team um, in in their in their region, and, and they really are in their division. And, and uh, I personally felt like they really deserved to be in the playoffs that year. Um, and so, that year over year, they've managed to have some sustained success. And I think with bringing bringing Jake Smith back, um, you know, you already have a game breaker, and they have a, a pretty good quarterback coming up as well. And so. Um, it's just a matter of, 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 I guess, making sure that, you know, they, they had a few opportunities to get some guys in games and, and develop a little bit. But I think the culture is there for them to continue to be competitive. I'm not sure it's there to continue to challenge for a championship immediately, but we'll see. Um, Liberty, I think, I absolutely. You know, I, I Perry, I feel like, is right there as well. Um, I, I think that what you're seeing with, with the teams that have either – gotten better over time or become acclimated to a new division over time um i i think that those are those are long-term solutions that there's not a bunch of people that transferred into liberty there's not a bunch of people that transferred into perry you know the, the, these teams were built up over time to be successful and uh and, and i think they will be next year it's very rare for a Hamilton job to become available. It's very rare for a Brophy job to become available, and both are available currently. Uh, just what type of coaches do you think, uh, at least stylistically, would be good fits um, for those types of jobs? Well, stylistically, you know, ha Hamilton has sort of run uh, the same offense or a variation of the same offense for uh, maybe since like 2003. Um, you know, they, they really like to run the ball and, um, you know, they run their little end around it or their slants when they're in the red zone. Um, you know, that's just, it's kind of, uh, that, you know, they blew their previous offensive records out of the water this year, just because for the very first time that while they've been sending all these quarterbacks to play college football, they actually had a division one talent. And that, that was what really afforded them to be able to open up the offense a little bit more. Now they've, they've got a couple of talented quarterback i believe terrell brown's younger brother was a quarterback of the freshman team uh and then and then you have i think brandon shanks um who was caa player of the year as a freshman before transferring in, into hamilton where his dad is now the freshman coach 
Um, so you, you've got some options uh, to maybe continue to, to kind of diversify what they have offensively there. I would personally, I, I would like to see them just bring in somebody who um, who is maybe going to, I don't want to say clean house, but bring in a lot of their own people and establish their own culture. Um, there, it's a new era at Hamilton, and I think it should really be treated as such. Uh, at Brophy, I think you just have you, – you, it's going to be tough to follow Scooter Molander. He went 12 straight years winning a playoff game. Uh, there, there are not a lot of schools or single coaches that have ever done anything like that at, at the highest division in the state. So whoever comes in is just going to have to be open to the idea that it might be a rocky, uh, a, a rocky time trying to steer that ship and establish their own culture uh, I thought Scooter Molander did a lot of good there um, over a long period of time. And uh, whoever they bring in, um, I, I just hope that they have the opportunity to put their own stamp on the program and they don't just sort of get lost in that shadow. What are some things that we should be keeping an eye on as the early letter of intent day approaches? Well, um, with Arizona State making a coaching switch, uh, it's going to be important for a guy like Herm Edwards to get a, to to evaluate some of the prospects that are already committed in Arizona State's class, and then you know figure if he's going to make a push for them to sign early because guys like Hunter McGinnis at, at Hamilton and Ralph Frias at Safford, you know, were guys who I believe had planned on signing you know at the early signing period, and so sometimes when you you know I, it's it's very unique that they're keeping their whole offensive staff but ultimately the buck stops with the head coach so he needs to come in and get familiar with the people who are already committed in this recruiting class and decide if those are players that he wants to move forward with or not and, and I probably wouldn't behoove him to make some changes to you know local recruits like those two um, because you want as much goodwill as possible regardless of whether or not he feels they'll fit into what he's trying to do um, I wouldn't expect you know, Jason Duell always says that there's usually between 80 and 90 um, F FCS or FBS athletes that sign uh, on signing day in February. I wouldn't expect, with this being the first time that we have an early signing period, I wouldn't expect to see more than maybe 20 um, local guys uh, or Arizona guys signing um, because it's just it's just such a new experience, and with all the coaches moving around, everything's really up in the air. So really, unless you're going to be somebody who is a mid-year transfer and you're committing to the school and not the coaching staff, which I think everybody knows isn't always the case. Uh, and that school is committed to you as well. I would recommend probably um, for the most part hold, holding off just to see how everything shakes out, uh, especially with everything that's going on with NAU, you know, basically firing the whole staff and then rehiring them before they have the chance to leave. Uh, and then with, you know, University of Arizona already has some coaches coming and going um jim mccharles like their talented offensive line coach he's moved on to oregon state so you never really know you know what a coaching staff is going to look like probably until you know maybe early january mid-january so um I, I i would advise players who don't have their mind made up completely to hold off and, and you know um if you've got options you know the worst that could happen is that you're choosing you know your 1a instead of or 1b instead of 1a so i i would um, I, I would definitely caution student athletes unless they're a hundred percent got their mind made up to just let things shake out and see what coaches are going to be where. Ralph, always great stuff from you, and we love chatting with you. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Haley, Jordan. Ralph Anson from Arizona Varsity. There. Up next on the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show, we will have Sports 360 AZ recruiting expert Jason Jewell. Keep it right here.